Okay, so I'm Rodney from Shanghai, coming at you from Macau, and think about the planet, do something, you can make a difference in your own little sphere of influence. Sweet. Take talk, let's talk. This is the Mitten Shah Show. We've asked the same seven questions to entrepreneurs from all over the world to figure out what makes us tick. Take talk, let's talk. Uh, Rodney, welcome. Yeah. Thanks a lot for doing Thank this. Thank you. You're welcome. Nice to be here. Rodney, where are you from and how would you explain what your business does to a six-year-old child? Okay, so I come from Sydney, Australia, uh, but I currently live in Shanghai. So if I was to explain what my business does to a six-year-old, uh, in its most simplest form, we get a whole lot of people together, photographers, um, actors, models, um, and we put everyone together and we make photos and videos. Um, so I guess to break that down even further uh, for, for the benefit of our young friends, um, you know, we also have people who work with lights and cameras and um, people who make props and sometimes we go to locations and um, depending on whatever is required to make a photo, we put all the elements together, all the things together in one place and capture that image to produce a photo. It's photos or also videos? We do videos. Okay. I guess, yeah, the business comes from a photography background, but okay. you know, in recent years, we're definitely more and more video. So I guess okay. my natural tendency is to default to photos and, and, and it's probably the bulk of what we do. So you make sure that the magazines and the videos that they see are the best videos and magazines out there? Correct, yeah. correct. So uh, most of the stuff we do is for, for brands and yeah. commercial. We have a lot of editorial shoots that come and shoot in our studios mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and sometimes we work directly with those but most of the stuff we do is commercially driven. Okay. So okay. more for advertising or for websites or for packaging right. or, right. or right. ads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You make the world a more visually interesting place to live. We try to. Yeah, sweet. We try to. What got you started on this? So I've been a photographer for, uh, I've been in the photography industry and, and myself was a photographer, you know, 25 years ago, um, straight out of university. I pretty much became interested in photography and, and never really pursued a corporate life. So I defaulted to image making and um, when I moved to China uh, 15 years ago, I uh, was taking photos and then I gradually sort of got into production and I was helping um, a friend build up her uh, talent agency and, and so then I started you know, working more on the production side. Mm -hmm. Then the opportunity to take a studio came up and I'd always dreamed of these lovely big warehouse spaces and in China there were many. So we opened a studio. Okay, so it was very much uh, interest after university and then it just snowballed into... Yeah, I was always interested. Um, I mean, I remember way back in high school, I did work experience at, at the Sydney Morning Herald in the photography department. So, okay. so there yeah. was something in my heart that yeah. that I, I, I drifted towards photography. And I think it was probably partly that combined with the fact that I didn't really want to go and work in a big company or yeah. I'm not a really, you know, big political player. So, so yeah. working in a big company sort of fighting for for, for the future or wasn't, position, really, yeah, yeah. wasn't yeah. really what I wanted to do. Uh, tell me some of the things that keep you up at night and on the flip side, what makes you jump out of bed in the morning? So keeping me up at night is probably uh, chess.com and uh, making a few final moves before bed <laughs> and uh, uh, getting me up in the morning. I like to get up and, and do some exercise and it's, it's pretty busy in the morning trying to you know get up and, and get the kid up ready for school and yeah. get moving and stuff. So I try to create a bit of space for myself. So getting up a little bit early and either okay, do, for some, me time actually. Yeah. do some yoga or meditation and, and really try to make sure I have enough time to get that in before, you know, and still not totally uh, ignore my kid mm -hmm. and uh, before we, before he goes to school and so on. Sweet. Um, what do you know now that you wish you knew when you started? So I think what what do I know now? I mean, it would would have been an it would have been amazing to to have an idea of the, the pace of change and the impact that social media mm -hmm. has had on mm -hmm. the way we do things. Mm -hmm. uh, when we opened the the studios and uh, ten years ago uh, in China, Weibo was the predominant social media and people were a little bit on Facebook and Instagram wasn't even blocked back then. Mm -hmm. So um, you know it was a lot more simple with the way that we interacted with social media mm. and just how it's evolved and how it's become such a, a part of, of the way we do business. Mm. 
um, for us from a content production point of view, but also our clients from the way that they rely on social media mm-hmm. for their business activities. So um, yeah, it would have been nice to have a heads up about all of that. Mm-hmm. And I think we're all still you know, struggling to try to keep up and work out the best way. And every time you think you got your head around something, it changes again. So uh, it's certainly challenging now. So, so sort of being a little bit ahead of the curve, but you don't know which curve is going to be the important one that's going to happen. Well, in China as well, it's yeah. a little bit harder because, you, you know, A, there's the China platforms for China. Yeah. And then regarding foreign platforms, you never know if yeah. it's going to be blocked next week yeah. or, you know, there's always that risk. Mm-hmm. So we're used to dealing with the notion that things can change very quickly, mm-hmm. probably a little faster than, than what would happen in, say, the US market mm-hmm. where you've got your established players and you kind of, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty stable. But in China, new apps, new platforms pop up every year and, you know, there's a rush to fill the space and there's all the copycats. And so, so the model is constantly evolving and China moves very quickly. Yeah. Um, in this journey, if there are some mistakes that other entrepreneurs can learn from that you can share? So I think for me, definitely not really focusing on my people um, early on in the business and just kind of building it and not spending enough time and attention um, nurturing the people and um, working closely with them instead of just having these expectations that the work just had to be done. Mm-hmm. So yeah. um, I think I've probably made a few quite a few human resource errors early on and, and not managing um, my people well enough. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I hope that you know, we yeah. do things differently these days. Um, in your business life, some of the high points, some of the points that you're most proud, happy, satisfied, content with? So this year, we uh, Central Studios is celebrating our 10th anniversary. Nice. And uh, for us, we're pretty proud of that. Yeah. I think you know to run a business in China um, and be as a foreigner and, and, and hit the 10 year mark, I think is, is, is a bit of kudos. Mm-hmm. Um, and also for what we do, our studios, you know, they're very, very well regarded across the country. Uh, we've got a great reputation, um, known as the best studio in, in China really. And, and when we opened, we were the first to, to, to kind of move into that space. So I think, um, you know, that's, that's been definitely something to be proud of, but also I believe that we've, we've sort of really come and opened at a time when the industry was evolving and we've been a, definitely been a part of that whole photography industry evolving into a really international top class mm-hmm. sort of standard in China. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Tim Ferriss question, so if you had a billboard and you could put out any message you want, what would your message to humanity be? Oh God, it would have to be something uh, environmentally related, you okay. know, just, just cut down your waist or, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't know, I mean, to, to try to think about a really eloquent, short, succinct way of saying this, but, um, I don't know, think about your footprint or something. Yeah, don't yeah, waste. Don't, just, the planet, stupid, it's the planet. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, and how has EO made a difference in your personal family, community or business life? So, um, it's a great community. Uh, the Support Networks Forum is, is incredible. Um, the events and stuff, the learning that it offers me personally is fantastic. Um, you know, as, as a community living in Shanghai, as an expat, it, you know, it offers a really great network of knowledge. Um, we all come up with problems and issues in our daily lives and our businesses, whether it's whether it's a personal question or a tax question or a or a you know even moving house. Mm-hmm. Um, having the, the community and the chapter there with with everyone's own experiences mm-hmm. is something that is is never never short of answers. So it's a huge resource and support network. Awesome, Sparkling. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. Yeah.